The Houston Texans just traded for Stephon Diggs from the Buffalo Bills. And I think it's pretty safe to say the Texans are going for a pretty big run this year. So today, we are going to try to build on the Texans' recent success and see how good we can make this team now that they added Stephon Diggs. So this should be a lot of fun. And honestly, I kind of have maybe a hot take about this move that, you know, apparently people don't agree with. I'll get to that in a second, though. But I'm super excited to get into this, so I'm going to make this intro short. Super quick. If you enjoyed today's video, you know I experimented with not doing light goals, and uh, apparently that wasn't a good idea because the first time I did a light goal again, we almost hit it within the first day. So I'm gonna do another one. If we can hit 3,000 likes on this video, it'll let me know y'all want to see another Texans rebuild. Either that, or let me know any fun rebuild ideas y'all have in the comments down below, and be sure to like some of them if you think they're good ideas, because if I use that suggestion, I'll give you a shout out if you care about that. Whoever leaves the comment, I mean, and that helps me know what y'all want to see. So let me know any fun rebuild ideas y'all have down below. But again, 3,000 likes and I'll do that. It very much helps out the channel. And last thing, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Because I have a lot of fun stuff coming up. And I'm trying to hit 100k before the end of the year. Which we are very much on pace to do. And it'll make you an OG of the channel for when we inevitably hit 10 million subscribers. Definitely. And yeah, all I do are rebuilds. So if you like those, be sure to subscribe. But without further ado, let's get into this rebuild. Oh yeah, and I guess my hot-ish take. A lot of people... People are saying the Bills got scammed by the Texans in this trade. I don't really agree with that. I mean, trade value isn't what it used to be. A second round pick is really the most we see getting traded unless it's for like a QB or like a young, cheap, super good player, which doesn't really happen. They don't get traded. Like Stefan Diggs is still really good, but I think he's 30 in real life and he's expensive. He's also probably not going to wear 81. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was fair enough for both sides. I don't know if that's that hot of a take. Maybe not, but I saw like everyone's saying, wow, the, the Bills got scammed. I'm like, eh. I mean, I don't think I would give up a first for Stefan Diggs at 30 with that much cap hit, I guess. I don't know. I'm just yapping. I will say, though, I really like what this Texans team has done throughout the offseason. Adding Daniil Hunter, Danico Autry, Aziz Alshair, Joe Mixon, and now obviously Stefan Diggs. They're clearly trying to do something this year. But let's get to the draft, and let's see who we want to pick. Looking at this team, I actually have no idea what position we're going to go for. Oh, it's a 2025 second. I didn't know that. Okay, maybe that kind of changes things. Maybe that isn't a great trade for, for the Bills. <laughs> I understand now. Okay. But here in the draft, there are definitely some good players still available. I'm I'm not going to go with a receiver, but there are some good ones. Honestly, there are a lot of good players gone. I was thinking about a defensive tackle, but you know, we could go Chris Jenkins. Okay, this is going to be kind of a goofy pick, but I think we might go with Cooper BB. Kenyon Green definitely hasn't worked out and Shaq Mason is definitely older. Plus, I really want to build this offense up. I mean, we we might as well keep building it. And I don't really love many of the defensive players that are still left. I guess we could go Cameron Kinchins, but let's make this O-line even stronger. Let's go with Cooper BB as our first pick. And now our second pick in the second round, we could go Mike or Mikey Sainer still, but we don't really need a nickel corner with Desmond King. Well, Madden did something stupid. We'll get to that in a second. But TJ Tampa, I think we'll take him. I don't think I've really used him much in rebuilds, although I can't remember, so I might be lying, but we'll still take him. <laughs> Another hidden dev. I don't even know if I showed the last one. I'll try to remember to show it. I probably won't. And now in the third round, let's go with Tyler Davis out of Clemson. Another player that I don't know if I've used in this game, but I do like in real life, so let's take him as our last pick, I'm pretty sure. No dev trait, but good strength, good acceleration. Sounds good. But here's how we did in the draft. It was decent. I mean, I always feel the need to to mention that my draft classes are lower overall than regular Madden ones. So this looks horrible on paper, but it's like normal compared to other ones. But yeah, Cooper BB is a 73. TJ Tampa, only a 71, but he's decent. Tyler Davis, Tyke Smith. We also took Jalen Ford, Brandon Coleman. Like this was definitely a decent draft. We got Sam Hartman as our backup QB. This roster is honestly really good. I had a hard time drafting because they're, they're there really aren't many positions where they're gonna get a starter and honestly their depth is really damn good I feel like this would be a decent team if you removed all of their starters not a decent team but like maybe one of the best groups of backups in the league is what I'm trying to say but anyways definitely a good draft and let's get into year one but here's a look at the team heading into year one surprisingly only an 82 overall it feels a lot better I guess our offense is an 85 also Dalton Schultz got superstar dev will definitely take that this is pretty much just the Texas offense though just with Cooper BB. I have no idea who they're gonna draft. 
But uh, I do wish we drafted a defensive tackle earlier because for some reason, Danico Autry retired. So that's unlucky. We'll try to get Tyler Davis some playing time. Should I make him the number two? Should we do this? I guess we could. And oh yeah, I tried to extend every player that was on a one-year deal. I just went into their contracts and edited them. But for some reason, none of them saved. So like all of our upcoming free agents hit the open market, even though they should be under contract. So I had to go and get all of them back. Desmond King was one of them. <laughs> that was super fun. Just the classic Madden jank. But we got everything figured out. So let's get to the midseason point of year one. And we will see how this team does. All right. Well, at the midseason point, I, I don't know what's wrong with this game. We're only three and four. And the Lions are 0 and 6. <laughs> We have a really bad offense. Same with the Lions. They have the worst in the league, but we have a really bad one too. The Cardinals are 5-2. and two, And big shot, I was going to say, I bet the best two teams in the league are the Chiefs and the Cowboys. Guess who the best two teams in the league are? The Jags are 6-1 and one too. This is something. But let's see who we have to re-sign. Anyone important? Ooh, Nico Collins. He's honestly not that expensive. <laughs> Four years, 60 mil. I mean, that's a long deal, but that's pretty cheap. Only a little, like, 15.2. Yeah, 15.2. I'm fine with that. That, and he takes it and then honestly other than him I guess Jimmy Ward but he's gonna be 34 next year I guess we could resign Mario Edwards I don't know how long his deal was though we'll see same with Desmond King I don't know how long he's signed for we'll figure that out th out at the end of the year Ooh, and we'll already have the fifth year option for Derek Stingley we also have one for Kenyon Green I guess we'll pick that up it's only six mil but can't do that yet we'll do that at the end of the year this has been a really interesting start to this rebuild <laughs> I don't really expect to make the playoffs this year unless our past game does get better but let's Let's just get to the end of the year and we will see what happens okay yeah we went seven and ten unlucky let's see what went wrong because i i have no idea oh okay cj stroud only 3300 yards only 19 touchdown passes i guess only six interceptions but just not many stats we didn't really pass all that much yeah we passed almost the least out of any team oh justin fields was horrible okay yeah not a great year from cj stroud but i guess could have been worse joe mixon 1300 yards 4.1 per carry 12 touchdowns stefan diggs was our leading receiver with 900 yards 10 touchdowns i don't think he would be very happy you know only getting 70 catches the blocking for how little we passed Titus Howard was pretty horrible. And then Aziz Alshayer led the team with 125 tackles. TFL's 31 from Will Anderson, but only four sacks. Tyler Davis with 19 TFLs as a rookie, but sacks six for Tyler Davis led the team. Tied with Daniil Hunter with six and Will Anderson with four. Can we get a new company running this game, please? And then interceptions, five for Derek Stingley, three for Jimmy Ward, two for Aziz Alshayer, and then one for three players. Lots of picks, but not many sacks for having one of the best pass rush duos in the league. Lamar Jackson wins another MVP. Better than seeing Mahomes or Prescott every year. I guess they are both up here. Offensive player of the year also goes to Lamar. Defensive player of the year goes to Max Crosby for the AFC. Anderson at number eight. Trey Benson wins offensive rookie of the year for the Bengals. For some reason, I just completely forgot we were using, you know, real draft classes. I was like, huh, that's funny. Madden generated a player named Trey Benson. I'm stupid. I seriously don't think I've ever been this tired before. I'm struggling. And defensive rookie of the year, of course, we already get cucked year one. Kamari Lasseter wins it for the Ravens. Tyler Davis at number two. Awesome. TJ Tampa at number four. Hopefully Davis can still get a dev trait for having that many TFLs. But let's get into another offseason and hopefully we can address some of the problems with this team, but I don't even know what the problems are. It's just we didn't really pass much on offense and we didn't get many sacks on defense despite having Daniil Hunter and Will Anderson. We'll see what we can do. But in the Super Bowl, it's actually not Cowboys Chiefs surprisingly we <laughs> if you haven't seen the last rebuild i did go and watch that after this it was well it seems like everyone's enjoying it it's like my best performing video ever but there was a little bit of repetition with the super bowl there by a little bit i mean it was the exact same super bowl literally every single year no spoilers but go watch it after this it was a lot of fun and i'm glad y'all are enjoying it and oh it looks like Derek stingley got x factor we'll definitely you know obviously pick up the fifth year there let's see if we got any other dev traits i don't know who maybe will anderson got x factor for getting 31 tfls but he only had four sacks joe mixon could have gone up to superstar for having 1300 yards and hopefully tyler davis got a dev trait okay joe mixon somehow didn't get one will anderson did and tyler davis did okay cool didn't get any xp but at least he got star dev he maybe should have had star dev whatever we'll take it either way we'll pick up the fifth here for Kenyon green it's cheap ish i guess it's not super cheap but cheap enough 
<laughs> cheap for a fifth year. And honestly, everyone else, I think I'm fine with letting go. Let me see how long they signed Mario Edwards for. It was only one year, 1 1.6 mil. He was a pretty damn good pass rusher for the Seahawks last year. That's crazy. I don't know if I want to re-sign him though, because he is 31. But let's get into free agency and let's see what we can do. But in free agency, there honestly isn't really anyone I want too bad. Like I've been saying, this is a really complete team. We could maybe go for a center. I mean, I'm sure the Texans are going to start Juice Scruggs. I didn't really like that pick though when they made it. Let's see. I'm actually going to sign two secondary players. We're going to go for Tyran Matthew and Kenny Moore. Two older players, both are over 30 or at least 30. Matthew being 33. But we'll bring him back to the Texans. I completely forgot he was a Texan. I guess only for a year. That's probably why. But we'll try to improve this secondary even more. Not that it really needs it, but we might as well do something. Let's see if they want to sign. And it looks like we do get both. That's pretty huge. But here in the draft, we pick at number 13. I thought we would have a little bit better of a pick, but that's fine. What do we even want to do here? There was a defensive tackle I was looking at. So here's the thing. Madden did the silly, goofy, quirky thing where it just shows everyone as a top five talent after you load a custom draft class when they're fully scouted. Not that this is a custom draft class, but I mean, the last one was and it glitches all the future ones. So I cheated as I usually do because this is stupid and we should know who the good defensive tackles are. And Weathersby is a 78 and he definitely looks like one. He looks pretty damn good. It would be a reach. He isn't supposed to go until like pick 17 in round two, but you know, because we technically cheated, I guess we'll take him early, but it's not really even cheating because it should tell us who the good ones are. It just doesn't because the game's broken. So let's go with Miles Weathers, Miles Weathersby out of Wisconsin. That's hard to say for some reason. Let's take him. Normal dev, I figured, but he is a good overall. And now I, we don't really need a receiver, but I, Deshaun Watson or Deshaun Watson, Deshaun Watkins looks pretty good. We're not bringing back Deshaun Watson here. The only thing is we really don't need a receiver. Ray Avery and Ramon Martin. Martinez both look really good too. Let's see, do we need a receiver now? I, definitely not. No, <laughs> we're still five deep with good receivers. Let's see if there's a really good lineman. And if not, I think we'll go with a corner. Ooh, Tyler Whitfield looks pretty good at center, but he's not supposed to go until day three. Damon Woodward at corner looks pretty good. Only C man, but A press B zone. He has 431 speed, which isn't actually going to be 431 speed. It'll be more like 439 speed because Madden, but he looks pretty good. Ooh, Chris. Christopher Copeland, A man, B press. He's really terrible zone. That's the only thing. And F play rec. This is a weird player. He also ran a 447, but that's listed as good. I mean, that's fine, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily good. I don't know. Ooh, Sean Russell, C man, B or A zone. Good speed, great excel. I want a corner. I just, I don't know which one is the best. It might be Sean Russell, but his press is bad. I do like the excel in the zone, though. This is a tough one. <laughs> this is a hard team to draft for. There's also Steven Edwards. He actually has great speed and great excel, despite only running a 4-4-6. Yeah, I think we'll go Steven Edwards. Like, how does a... <laughs> Here I go complaining for the millionth time, but how does a 4-4-6 speed corner have better excel in the same speed as one who ran a 4-3-1 and a 4-3-0 flat at his pro day? Like, what? I don't know, man. Let's go with Steven Edwards out of Tennessee. Hidden dev. He wasn't supposed to go until the third to fourth round, so I maybe could have waited, but whatever. He looked good. Good. Should I just go with Tyler Whitfield? He only has solid strength. I feel like 33 reps is a little better than solid. Whatever. He looks pretty good. I think we're going to take him. Again, This I've been reaching. Like, we're three for three on reaches. But I think we're getting good players. So, you can't really call them reaches. Unless they are, like, actually not good. I don't know. A awareness, A impact block. Literally every blocking stat that's fully scouted is an A. The only thing is, you know, his power probably isn't good. But at worst, it's a D. It's not like it's an F. And hopefully it's a B. I doubt it is, but you never know. Let's take him. Normal dev. Unfortunate. But this was a pretty good draft. Weathersby, like I said, is a 78. I wish he had a dev trait, but Edwards is a 76. Honestly, that's kind of better than I was expecting. I just didn't really think any of the corners were good, but he is pretty good. 93 speed, 93 excel. The same man in press, or man in zone. Both a 78. Whitfield is only a 71. He's kind of, kind of bad. But we also ended up getting Sean Russell. I guess he would have been a better pick earlier, because he's only 21. But hey, we ended up getting both of the corners anyways, so. 
who cares? We also took Neil White at guard. I doubled up at a lot of positions here. He's pretty good though. Earl Malone, he's only 72 normal dev. But I mean, that's good value for the fifth round. We ended up getting Ramon Martinez in the fifth. He was supposed to go in like the third. So we'll take that. He's a 73. And then I didn't take these picks, but they weren't bad. A 70 overall, a 69. Nice. We'll take it. Oh, the number one pick was only a 72 overall. Was this not a very good draft? Ooh, no, it wasn't <laughs> at all. There were only three players at an 80 or above and all of them went almost in the top five. So we pretty much couldn't have gotten an 80 overall or above. Definitely an interesting draft. And let's get into year two. But here's a look at the team heading into year two. We're looking pretty good. I'm gonna have to decide who I wanna start where on the offensive line. We have a lot of good depth there. I think I'm gonna start BB over Howard and then maybe White at left guard or Kendrick Green. Both of their last names are colors. That's interesting. I don't know why my brain draws those connections, whatever. But here's a look at the defense looking pretty good. We have about a million corners, which I think will work out fine because, you know, Tyron Matthew isn't going to be here forever. He's 33. So I think we'll just move a safety to corner or a corner to safety. We'll see. Maybe that's not realistic, but like we can just make up the storyline that one of these corners has safety experience. I don't know. We'll see what we want to do there. But this D line is looking very, very, very good. Hopefully it actually plays as it should this year. Unlike last year, we'll see. I guess we got a lot of TFLs last year, but we need sacks. <laughs> That's more important. I guess they kind of do the same thing effectively, but sacks are definitely a little more drive crushing most of the time. All right, I'm just yapping. I'll rearrange the O-line a little bit and let's get to the mid-season point of year two. Oh, and actually, Weathersby hit star dev. We'll take it. That's actually huge because, you know, the big problem was he had normal dev. And he gets 10,000 XP. Ooh, now up to an 80 overall. We'll take it. But at the midseason, we are four and two. Definitely better this year. Still a terrible pass game. I just, maybe we should switch to a, you know, more pass heavy offense. But I mean, we have the third scoring offense in the league. I just don't know how long that's going to last. Kind of like last year. Our defense is good, but I'm going to guess we don't have many sacks. Yeah, we only have 10. See, like, we're, we're doing well, despite not having, like, the most important thing on each side of the ball. Like, we have no pass game on offense. And we have no pass rush on defense, which that's really stupid. Again, we have very good players there. And for re-signings, I already accidentally looked at this, just completely not thinking. I guess it doesn't really matter, but Daniil Hunter, Damian Pierce, Christian Harris, Jalen Petrie, Joe Mixon. Actually, I'll have to check how long the Joe Mixon deal is, because this might not be up yet. But Aziz Alshayer, lots of players here. <laughs> and the fifth year for Will Anderson and CJ Stroud, which honestly aren't very expensive. But we'll start with Daniil Hunter. This team is getting expensive. Two years, 39 mil. That's pretty cheap, though. He takes it. Christian Harris is very cheap. We'll go three years. I feel bad giving him this low of a deal, but three years, 16 and a half mil, and he takes it. Jalen Petrie, again, way too cheap. Three years, 19 and a half mil, he takes it. Joe Mixon, we'll see. Oh, he has 5.7 yards per carry this year. Good Lord. I don't think we'll be able to pay both of these guys, but I guess it wouldn't be that expensive to pay both of them. How's Damian Pierce been doing as the number two? Not good, but honestly, the number two, you know, they don't normally do well. So I don't know how he would do would do as a starter. And then I think we'll wait until the end of the year for the rest of these. I think we should be able to restructure up some money. I hope, because <laughs> we only have 12 mil for all these players. So let's just get to the end of the year and we will see how we finish. Okay, but actually, before I reveal how we did in year number two, if you haven't already, be sure to leave a like on the video. I would very much appreciate it. It helps me know that y'all want to see more like this, and it helps YouTube know that people are enjoying this video. Ooh, and question of the day. Actually, you know what? I... I I usually just ask random ass questions, but I'll make this one centered towards this rebuild. What do you think of the Stefan Diggs trade? I think it was good for both teams. You know, Bills get a second round pick. I think it would have been better for him if it was a second this year. I do think the Texans won the trade though, assuming Diggs stays healthy and all that stuff. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. It's gonna be interesting to see. I'm guessing most are gonna lean towards the Texans winning, which I agree, but I don't know, we'll see. So yeah, let me know that in the comments. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, because if you've liked this, video so far most of my videos are like this and all I do are rebuilds so be sure to subscribe but in year number two we finished 10 and 7 and we made the playoffs thankfully we maybe should have done better but I guess it's better than not making the playoffs like last year we actually have an 88 overall offense Ooh, and our defense didn't end up doing that well you know overall we didn't end up doing that well at least in terms of yards for individual things like we ended up with 35 sacks how but we ended up allowing 38 touchdowns 
touchdowns. That was like, whatever, who who cares? <laughs> we were a completely different team in the second half of the year. CJ Stroud did very well this year though. 3,500 yards, 30 touchdowns, only four four picks. That's crazy. Really good completion percentage. Joe Mixon, almost 1,500 yards and five yards per carry at what, 30 years old? Oh, he's only 29. I always think Joe Mixon's older than he actually is. I don't know why, but Damian Pierce, 15 touchdowns is the goal line back. He was a, a big touchdown vulture. A thousand yards for Stephon Diggs, 13 touchdowns, but really not much outside of him. I almost want to switch to a more pass heavy offense. I do. Cooper BB at right tackle wasn't very good, but the rest of the line definitely was. Aziz led the team with 118 tackles, TFLs, 19 for Hunter, 15 for Weathersby as a rookie, 12 for Anderson in sacks, 10 for Will Anderson, we'll take it. Seven and a half for Tyler Davis. He's been really good, which is stupid, but we'll take it. I mean, it's not stupid that he's good. It's just stupid that he's getting more sacks than Daniil Hunter, but six and a half sacks for Weathersby as a rookie and only six for Daniil Hunter. This game is something else. Does he not have like a, a trait? No, he has, I guess we'll give him big hitter that shouldn't really do anything, but he has finesse and power moves and high motor. We'll give him strips ball, I guess. And then interceptions, six for Derek Stingley, three for Kenny Moore and Tyron Matthew, two for Sean Russell as a rookie, and then one for, what, four different players? That's a lot of interceptions. MVP goes to Lamar Jackson again. Are we gonna see a cowboys Ravens Super Bowl again? But Offensive Player of the Year goes to Jonathan Taylor. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Max Crosby, again. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to another Bengals player in Justin Humphrey. And Defensive Rookie of the Year does thankfully go to Miles Weathersby. I thought we were gonna get cucked again. But Russell all the way down at number 10. I thought he would be like top five-ish, but we'll take I mean, we'll take defensive rookie of the year. Believe me. Hopefully we get superstar dev from that. But we're going to be taking on the Raiders in the wild card, so our playoffs are pretty much over. The Raiders are usually really good in this game. It looks like their offense was kind of horrible this year, but their defense was very good. I guess their offense wasn't horrible, but they were horrible at certain things. Let's simulate this game out, and let's see what happens. Not expecting a win, but we'll see. And we do win a <laughs> really low scoring game, 14 to 10, 24 total points, despite us having an 88 overall offense. And now we're going to be taking on the Chargers in the divisional. I We're just taking on the entire AFC West, I guess. The Chargers are another team that is surprisingly good at times in this game. It looks like they were pretty good this year. Ninth offense in terms of yards, 12th on defense, but the fourth scoring offense and fifth for points per game on defense. They were pretty good. So let's see what happens. And we do win another very, very close game, 26 to 23. We've had a total of seven points in difference between the last two games. When we get a lot of up upgrades. Sean Russell now up to a 79 and 80 with morale, plus three man from the slot upgrade. Only star dev, which we should check the dev traits. I will in a second. I'm guessing they're all just going to be star, but you never know. Okay, none revealed on offense, but on defense. Yeah, both of the corners are just star. Unfortunate. Was that all the hidden devs we got? I thought we got more. I guess that's about right though, but we have a hot opponent scenario for the Ravens here. They're an 88 across the board. 88 offense, 88 defense, 88 overall. This is probably one of the best teams in the league right now in terms of overall at least maybe not the best but probably close the 49ers are a 90 overall and the Chiefs are an 89 so it looks like the Ravens are the third best team the Bucks are an 87 normally they're not very good in franchise at least you know overall wise but we're up there at an 86 I mean we're what fourth or no there were a few 87s never mind what am I talking about we're like in the 5 to 10 range but for the hot opponent we'll go be confident y'all know me plus 10 everything for both teams and let's see if we can move on to a super Super Bowl in just year two. Wow, what a prediction. <laughs> We lose, and guess what the Super Bowl is? Cowboys Ravens. Are we gonna see Cowboys Ravens every year in this rebuild? Apparently, we're two for two so far. <sighs> this game is so fucked up, dude. <laughs> this is so bad. There used to be a little diversity in Super Bowls, but now it's just literally the same thing every year. What was the score last year? Wasn't it like 23 to 10? <sighs> what is happening? We're just playing the same year over and over. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> But on a positive note, we get two upgrades for Miles Weathersby in Superstar Dev. Okay, he does get Superstar. That's cool. I didn't think he would, honestly. He's 97 playing up to a 98 strength, 94 tackle. He's not a very good pass rusher, but he is an insane run defender. But let's see who we have left to re-sign. It looks like we have 33 mil now for some reason. Maybe someone retired or just, you know, the cap expanded. That's probably what it is. Damian Pierce is actually higher overall than Joe Mixon, but after the season Joe Mixon had, plus he's actually interested. I think we're gonna stick with Mixon. I'll just do a one year. It's only 
five mil. We'll do that. But we'll pick up the fifth year for Will Anderson and for CJ Stroud. Both are not very expensive for what they're probably going to get. But I think we're good letting everyone else here go. And let's get into free agency. Ooh, there's some pretty good free agents this year. Chris Olave, Xavier McKinney. It's kind of a fall off, fall off after that. But Odafe Owe is up to an 86. Razul Douglas, Marquise Brown. There's some pretty good players. Why is Damian Pierce interested now <laughs> after we let him go? Why was... Uh, whatever. We might restructure some deals because I want to I wanna add some players here. We should be able to free up a really good amount of money, I'm guessing. What kind of deal is Stefan Diggs on? Did I extend him year one? I might have. I might be stupid. Never mind. Ignore me. Blake Cashman kind of looked like a Roblox character or something. Is that fucked up to say? Or like a Minecraft character? I don't know. I've never really noticed that. His head kind of square. Same with Cole Holcomb. Is everyone just square head? I don't know. That's fucked up. But here are the players we're going to go for in free agency. Do I really want Chris Olave? <laughs> I guess the better question is, do we need him literally at all? We already have and are paying Stefan Diggs. We already have and are paying Nico Collins. And then we also have Tank Dell. We don't need... <laughs> we don't need Chris Olave. Okay, these are the players we're actually going to go for. Xavier McKinney, Damian Pierce, Zach Tom, and Blake Cashman. We'll try to bring him back. So hopefully we can get these four players. They would be all huge additions. I guess Pierce wouldn't be. He would only be our second running back. But all the other three would be pretty good starters. So let's see if we can get them. Everybody signs, and we do get all four of them. That's huge. I have no idea what we're going to do in the draft now, but I guess I haven't for this entire rebuild, so it isn't really any different. But we pick at number 29, and I guess it just depends on who's available here. We could even trade this pick away if we really want to. I don't know, Madden trade value is kind of weird, so I honestly think, even though I have... Uh, like very high trade interest on. I think if we were gonna go to trade for someone like Stefan Diggs, it would have cost us like three first round picks. Like player trade value for certain players is just way too high. So I, I don't know if it would be a good option to trade away our first round pick. We'll see. There was a center I liked. I didn't look at him that closely, but Colby Phelps. Ooh, he could be really good. I wish we knew his finesse, but he's at least really strong. I don't think he's amazing, but he looks pretty good. Gonzalez also looks pretty good. I said that really weird, but but whatever. He might be better. Uh... It's hard to tell. Yeah, I think Gonzalez is better. He has four elite traits. Yeah, but he's not supposed to go until the third to fourth round. I don't need to take him yet. Lucas Williams, what's his combine looking like? I mean, we definitely don't need another defensive tackle. He looks pretty good, but eh. And then I looked at the safeties. I can't remember which the good ones are. I think Meadows is one of them. He was a 76, which he doesn't really look like it just because of his man, but he does have other good ratings. And then the other good one was, I can't remember, Stills. I think. He was also a 76. But we definitely don't need a safety. We're like four deep at safety. Should I trade this pick away? <laughs> Here, what's something we're gonna need next year that I just... I'll take a player and then I just won't re-sign someone at a certain position. Dalton Schultz, do we take a tight end? I don't think Texans fans would like if I got rid of him, but I don't know. Maybe they wouldn't care. Would y'all care? Let me know before I make this pick. Alright, I'll quit yapping. I'll figure something out. Let's see what we're gonna do. God, dude, most of the players I want <laughs> are supposed to go in the the third to fourth round. There's Dimitri Hillhouse. He looked good. There's the center, Manuel Gonzalez. And then there's Donald Thomas, a pretty good looking tight end. Here's what we're going to do. All right, this is the conclusion I came to. I'm going to go with Colby Phelps with this first pick, which is weird. I know, but we're going to take him here. I think he's good. He has hidden dev 90 strength. Cool. And then, wait, we don't even need to do this. I was going to do something. Stu no, no, we will do it. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I feel like we've taken 10 million offensive linemen. In the second round, we're going to go with Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Do we need to do that though? Like, this has been some really questionable drafting. I mean, it's worked out for sure, but it's been weird. <sighs> I don't know, because we do have White. I forgot about that, but we're going to be moving off of Mason soon, and then we'll let Kendrick Green go, but we'll still have White. I mean, Laramie Tunsil could retire, maybe. He is 32. Yeah, we'll still do it. Why not? <laughs> well, I can tell you why not. There are other things we could go with, but whatever. We'll take him. Hidden Dev. Those might be the best ratings I've ever seen for an offensive lineman. 92 strength, 76 speed, 80 agility. For someone who's 313 pounds, that's crazy. I know, really weird to go back-to-back -back centers in the first and second round, but work with me here, all right? Now, is the tight end still available? No. Is the D lineman still available? Shit. <laughs> 
Okay, well, that was my plan. Both of them are gone. Ooh, Glenn Gallery is still available. He's one of the guys I focus scouted. He looked pretty good. His combine actually wasn't the best, and we definitely don't need enough. We're taking the same positions over and over. Why? Whatever, it works. It's fine. Glenn Gallery, he looks really good. We'll take him. Hidden Dev, cool. This was a weird, weird draft. Okay, well, I'm glad I went with Gonzalez. He's an 82 overall as a rookie. Is he the best player in the class? My guess is no, but probably close. No, he is. These draft classes have been kind of horrible. The next closest was just an 80. Again, only three players at an 80 or above. But hey, we got the best player in the class. That's what I was hoping for. Oh my god. <laughs> he's a really weird player. He has 79 pass block power, even though he's an agile type. He only has 69 run block power too. Like, that's very different. Huh. He also has 85 awareness as a rookie? I'm surprised this guy isn't higher than an 82. He looks insane. He also looks 50 years old. I hate, I hate the old look and face scans, dude. Like, they should separate coaches and players, because I'm sure that's supposed to be a player. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. But I mean, Phelps was also a good center. 77 over all gallery was decent 74 clifton kirkland i wanted a depth linebacker i think he might even get some playing time as a rookie we'll see and then tommy hood will be our number two tight end always look for blocking tight ends in the later rounds if you don't know what to do and you need a number two tight end always look for ones that have a awareness and elite strength and then a blocking stats that's always what i go for there was a different one i wanted that went to the cowboys i was hoping he would be available with this fifth round pick but he literally went like two picks after this one after we took the linebacker was he good? No. We actually got the better one. Okay, well, I'm glad he went. But let's get into year three, and we will see how the team's looking. Just from the overall, 91 offense, 88 defense, which I don't know how the math works. It's only an 88, whatever. Or no, it's doing the glitch where it shows our defense as an 88, but it's probably only an, only an 85, whatever. Let's get into year three. But here we are heading into year number three. Now up to an 88 overall, 91 offense, and yeah, an 85 defense. I don't know why that glitch is a thing where it just shows our defensive overall as our team overall on the home screen, but whatever, or whatever you call that home screen, I don't know, who cares? Just one of the 14 billion glitches in Madden. But this team is looking really good, and, you know, two rookies starting on the O-line, it should develop really well. I wanna pass more, but I'm not gonna change the offensive playbook until our offense is actually, like, bad, bad. We'll see how long that takes. This could very well be a down year, too, like I'm kinda half expecting it. But here's the defense, it's only an 85, but it feels better than that? Like, I don't know. Like, if this was an actual defense, defense with, you know, Daniil Hunter, Will Anderson, Derek Stingley, Kenny Moore, Xavier McKinney, Tyran Matthew, Jalen Petrie, like, that would be one of the best defenses in the league, but it's only an 85, so I don't know. Oh yeah, and also Christian Harris got Superstar Dev, that's pretty cool. I don't really know why he got it, just he got it for nothing, we'll take it. But let's get to the midseason point, and again, I, I feel like we're gonna disappoint this year, but hey, I'm doing all I can, I'm trying to make this a good overall team, and that's really all I can do. Whether the match and gods bless us or curse us is not up to me, unfortunately. I guess I could force wins, but eh. Yeah, I, I know this game too well. We are, okay, I didn't think we would be that bad, to be fair. I thought we would be like three and four, not one and five. <laughs> I'm changing our defense, that's for sure. Maybe even our offense. I mean, even our run game isn't good this year. God, I hate having to change the defense though, but that's always what the problem is in simulation. Cause I don't know what good defensive playbooks are. They're so hit or miss like all of them are. I'm going Bills. I don't care. I always go Bills. It's the one that gets the most sacks for me. It doesn't get many picks, but we need the sacks. Should we stay as a 4-3 cover 3 or just base 4-3? I feel like we fit a base 4-3 a little better. I know it doesn't say we do, but we'll move some players around so they are fits. Do we switch the offense too? I mean, we could. It's been kind of ass. I mean, not really. The points per game have been good. We'll, we'll leave the offense for now. If it finishes bad, though, we'll change it heading into next year. Because yeah, we're still fifth in points per game for offense, so we'll leave it. Before re-signings, let's see, anything important? Yes, okay, Derek Stingley <laughs> will offer four years, 82 mil, that's pretty cheap. Deals are really cheap in this game. Like, Derek Stingley, if he keeps playing like he played last year, is probably gonna get, like, a over 30 mil per year deal. Maybe. I guess, I guess Jalen Johnson only got, like, 19. But, I mean, this will be, like, four years in the future, too, so, or three. But he takes it. Tank Dell isn't interested. I would re-sign him, but not interested. Dalton Schultz, we'll see. Honestly, there are a few 
players here. Honestly, more than I was expecting. Laramie Tunsil, I think, will resign after the year, after he regresses. Same with Kenny Moore. Damn, like, most of our contracts are coming in the same year. <sighs> Should we resign Dalton Schultz? I don't know. I'm worried about our cap if we do that. We'll just see at the end of the year who's interested, who regresses, if anyone's cheaper, more expensive. I don't know. It's a lot of older players. Like, all of our older players' contracts are expiring in the same year, or at least most of them. But let's just get to the end of the year, and we will figure it out once we get there. But this is a not very good season so far, clearly. <laughs> okay, and in year number three, we finish <laughs> 6 and 11. Unfortunate. And we had the worst scoring defense in the entire league, despite changing the playbook. So. <sighs> It is what it is. I don't know what to do about that. But CJ Stroud was very good once again. I'll just go quickly through the stats because, you know, it wasn't a very good year. Joe Mixon wasn't all that good. We'll try Damian Pierce next year. Stephon Diggs, 1,400 yards and 19 touchdowns. Where did that come from? <laughs> he hasn't been getting much production, but this year he just went crazy. We'll take it. Ooh. Normally, Zach Tom is one of the better right tackles in this game. Uh, not this year. The rest of the line held up very, very well, though. And then 120 tackles for Christian Harris, TFLs. 26 for Anderson, 23 for Hunter, 23 for Weathersby, and sacks, 15 and a half for Hunter. So this year, Hunter gets all the sacks, and Will Anderson only gets five and a half. Can we get both playing as well as they should? Please. <laughs> three and a half for Tyler Davis, then like nothing else outside of that. And interceptions, four for Stingley, three for Moore, and one for McKinney. Weird season. MVP goes to Lamar for the fourth year in a row, counting real life. That's fun. Love the diversity. CJ Stroud at number nine. That's cool. Diggs at number four for offense player of the year. <laughs> Defensive player of the year goes to Max Crosby for the third year in a row. Love the diversity. Hunter at number four. Offensive rookie there goes to Max Eason for the Colts. Tommy Hood at number four, the number two tight end. And Justin Hale wins defensive player or defensive rookie of the year for the Patriots. No Texans. <sighs> Unlucky. <laughs> so let's get into the offseason and I don't even know what to do. I think we just run it back, honestly, as much as we can. And in the Super Bowl, we, <laughs> we at least have a different one here. It's still the Ravens in it, but they win this time over the Seahawks. I mean, we'll take a 50% different Super Bowl than the last two years. You know, ask and you shall receive, or what you get what you ask for, because I asked for a different team, and we got one different team, and of course, it's my favorite team losing. Great. <laughs> but for re-signings, surprisingly, players seem more interested now than they were after we went 6-11. and 11. I guess we didn't finish the season that b that bad, though. We finished, what, 5-5, five and 5-6, five and five, five and six, something like that, which which, you know, that's a lot better than one in five or one in six or whatever we were. We'll resign Tank Dell, I think. Yeah, why not? Three years, 31 mil, he takes it. You know, maybe I'm regretting that immediately because we maybe could have drafted a receiver. We'll have a we'll have a high pick, but we'll see. It's not like we passed much anyways. That could be a mistake. <laughs> Whatever. It's fine. Let's restructure some deals. Okay, we were able to free up a decent amount of money, almost like 35 mil, or I guess it was only like 25 mil or something. I don't remember how much we had. Who cares? I want Laramie Tunsil back. He's been very good. We'll offer him two years, 51 mil. We can even restructure that if we want to, if we need to. Kenny Moore, he was pretty good this year, wasn't he? He had like four, three or four picks three picks he's had three picks each of the last three years not many pass deflections but we'll still resign him we'll go two years 18 mil and then i think we're gonna restructure those deals and try to get dalton schultz back and then i think that's it i think we're good letting everyone else go we could honestly go with a budget move there and just go with hood at tight end we'll see also gonzalez and phelps gonzalez has superstar phelps only has star that's kind of to be expected and who else had a hidden dev i think it was mills Mills only has star. That's fine. I expected that. We really haven't gotten very lucky with the dev traits, though. We've only hit one superstar. That's kind of crazy. I feel like my drafting hasn't been that bad. It's just been kind of unlucky. Like, we've gotten good overalls. It's just no dev traits except one superstar. But whatever. Let me restructure those deals and we'll resign Dalton Schultz. Why not? If we can afford him, that didn't free up much money. Yeah, I think we just barely can. We'll go three years, 29 mil, and he doesn't take it. Okay, cool. We can't afford the tag, so maybe we won't resign him. We will have a little money to work with in free agency, though. Let's see what we can do. We'll probably just resign Schultz, but maybe we'll do something different. You never know. Depends who's here and who we can afford. Ooh, okay, we can't afford Sam Laporta, but that would be fun. We could get younger there and go Michael Mayer. I mean, hey, Schultz didn't want to come back, so we'll go with a different option. 
Okay, player friendly is a little overkill, but whatever. And what's the team looking like? Are, are there any massive needs I'm not thinking of just in case? Mm, not really. Russ, ooh, whoa. Russell's a really good safety. I think we'll put him there. He goes from an 80 up to an 82. We could also go for a linebacker. Cashman regressed, and we don't really have a very good linebacker outside of Christian Harris. And even then, with superstar dev, he isn't developing that much. There isn't really a crazy good linebacker here, though. Well, well, we could go with Quincy Williams. He's pretty cheap. Should we do that? I think we will. Why not? Our defense has been a problem for some reason, so we'll try to make it better. And then we'll get Darnell Washington as our number two. I guess we'll have two blocking tight ends. Sure. Quincy Williams, Darnell Washington. Do they want to sign? Quincy Williams does, and that's the one I really care about, so that's cool. But here in the draft, we pick at number eight. There were some good-looking corners. I'm sure I was going to say one's probably going to go a pick before us, but one didn't, thankfully. They were probably already gone. Mm, there are still some pretty good-looking ones. I think Potts looked pretty good. Yeah. Pat Rose looks really good. What's he list? Ooh, man. Okay. We might have to go with Pat Rose. I know we don't really need a corner, but I've said this about a million times. We don't really need much anymore. There were some tight ends, but I don't know if they're worth taking tight end or worth taking top five. Oh, I forgot to cheat, bruh. Ooh, maybe they are worth, hmm, maybe they're worth taking top 10. I don't know. Jason Crowther looks pretty good. Frederick Toomer also looks good. Zach Allen, eh, his short route isn't great, but few elite traits. Will Gaddis looks good. Do all tight ends just look good and I don't know how to differentiate between like actual good ones? Maybe. <laughs> Elliot Jackson looks really good. He's not as fast, but he's the best blocker. I think we'll just go with one of the corners though. Let's go with, I think Pat Rose was the one I like. Yeah, he looks really good. Let's take him. Hidden Dev 96 speed, only 90 XL. That's weird, but we'll take it. I think I'm going to go Will Gaddis at tight end in the second round. Actually, let me check if there's like a really crazy good lineman. I always got to check for the, ooh, there might be. I don't know why. I feel like I've seen 40 million players named Dorian Sheets in Madden drafts. Maybe that's just me. I just feel like I see that name so much. It's a stupid name too. <laughs> Sorry if your name is Dorian Sheets, but I feel like I see that name a lot. It's not that stupid, but but Sheets is just a weird last name. Ooh, Braden Landry looks pretty good. I always look for centers. Center might be my new favorite position to draft. I mean, clearly, we took our first two picks last year were centers. I don't know. It seems like there's just always a really good one. This year might be a guard. Ah, I don't know. This guy's power isn't that good, but 41 bench reps, elite change direction, and acceleration. The only thing is his power isn't that good, which is weird because he has 41 bench reps. He's also a finesse type, but he only has B to D pass block finesse. I don't know if he is all that good, but his combine was sure good. I still might take him anyways, just to, you know, take that chance. Because I think we can get one of these two in the third round for sure. But what are we even going to do with Robert Miller? Like, he isn't going to start unless he is like an 82 or something, which I don't think he is. Eh, whatever. <laughs> we'll take him. He'll be a really, really, really good backup. Hidden Dev, 94 strength. Cool. We're number 69. Nice. Very mature, by the way. Definitely. And let's see. I think we'll go with Will Gaddis. I also might go with another tight end. I mean, hey, we need three. Three, you know, we might go Elliot Jackson, round four. But Will Gaddis will take him. I think he's like the happy mix of everything. He's like well balanced. He's a pretty good blocker. He actually looks like a really good receiver, but goodish speed. Well, it says great, but 461, yeah, that's pretty good. I don't know if that's great speed for a tight end, but it's good. Well, he also did run a 454. It's pretty great speed. I'm just being nitpicky at this point, but we'll take him. Of course, he has normal dev. <laughs> of course. That's why we're going to take another tight end. Oh, there goes Zach Allen. Let's go with Elliot. Jackson here it looks like the best blocking receiving tight end just the only thing is he's slow but it says good speed I don't know if I agree with 475 being good speed for a receiving tight end but we'll still take him and he has hidden dev I feel like the other dev traits are weird in this game I feel like I always say this the more athletic the player the better dev trait they should have normally not like a hundred percent of the time but just like a higher chance but it definitely doesn't work that way okay well this was a really really good draft Pat Rose is is an 82 overall at corner. 96 speed, 84 man. Sounds good. He'll start for us, and then I guess we'll move that one corner to safety, and then we'll have, like, still five good corners, but whatever. I'd rather have five good corners than no good corners, I guess. <laughs> Robert Miller, 78 overall. That's about what I expected. I should have, you know, predicted that. 94 strength, of course. 89 lead block, 93 impact block. Always look for A, lead block, and impact block if you want to find a really good lineman. I feel like that's what does it. All the really good ones 
ones seem to have like really high lead and impact block. But both Will Gaddis and Elliot Jackson were 74. Just Elliot Jackson's a little better because he does have the dev trait. So I guess he'll be our number two or even number one. We could, you know, risk it and see if he has a, a really good dev trait. I doubt he does, but he could. And then my last pick of the rebuild was JC Kirkpatrick. No dev trait, but a decent player, I guess. And I don't know what the CPU did. <laughs> oh, and the number one overall pick, Matt Clayton to the Cardinals at an 84 overall. A generational corner, it looks like. Or is there a technical, like, cutoff for generational players? Is it 85? Or can 84 be considered one? I have no idea. I don't know. Who cares? There were a lot of good quarterbacks, too. Or no, wait, that's a corner. There were a lot of good corners. Oh, that's our corner, Pat Rose. There were a lot of good corners this year. <laughs> Three of the top five were corners. The other two were QBs. But let's get into the final year of this rebuild, and we will see how the team's looking. If we underperform, nothing I can do about it. I've tried to build as good of a roster as I possibly can. But here's a look at the team heading into the final year of the rebuild. We're looking really good. I mean, CJ Stroud is up to a 95. Still no X Factor. I guess, again, I've said this a million times just because we haven't passed the ball. I wish we would, but I don't want to change the offense because it's been good. But Stephon Diggs is still a 90, surprisingly, at 33 years old. He hasn't really regressed that much, only like two overall. But he's still doing really well, so I guess it makes sense. And then here's the defense. Up to an 87, which isn't, like, amazing, but it, again, it just looks better than it actually is. Oh, yeah, and I almost forgot. I'll put Russell at free... Oh, I'm gonna have to redo the depth chart. Whatever. That's fine. We'll put Russell at safety. Didn't change our overall, but I didn't really expect it to. So we'll see how this team does. It's definitely really good. I don't think it's the best roster in the league. I kind of thought we could turn it into that, but like I said, we did get a little unlucky with the drafting, with dev traits and all that. It's still a really good team, though. It looks like... Oh, wait, the 49ers are only an 88. Same with the Cowboys. We are the best roster in the league. Okay, the Chiefs are only an 88. Yeah, we do actually have the best roster in the league. So I can't wait to miss the playoffs this year. <laughs> but no, I'll do everything I can to try to get this team to the playoffs. If we're struggling at the midseason, I'll bench whoever, you know, is struggling. But let's just get straight to the end of the year, and we will see how this team finishes in the final year. Okay, well, in year number four, we finished 11 in six. We had to do something to get here, but we had the best best defense in the league in terms of points per game and pass D. Our offense wasn't very good though. Should I change the offensive playbook or should I just stick with it? Because we have a 92 overall offense. That should not be the 20th best, 20, no, 20th best in the league. I should be probably the best. I don't know if we are the best, but at least close. Oh yeah, and what I did at the midseason is Cooper Beebe was horrible, so I benched him for Ryan Miller. What's his name? Robert Miller. Also, Laramie Tunsil was doing terrible too, but I didn't really have a replacement for him. How'd he finish? Okay, exactly as I expected. He had six sacks allowed at the midseason season finished with 11 so that's great <laughs> that's what we want in an 88 overall left tackle oh in what rose only has star dev he was like an 85 overall by week two he started at like an 82 i thought for sure he had x factor but he only has star interesting so yeah we got very unlucky with the dev traits in this rebuild we literally only hit two superstars but it is what it is we're up to a 90 overall and we are looking really really good i'm just still concerned about this offense cj stroud was good maybe his worst year so far but 3500 yards 26 touchdowns 10 picks that's a fine year. Damian Pierce, 1,400 yards, 15 touchdowns. He was very good. 1,000 yards for Diggs, 12 touchdowns. Collins was all right. Yeah, let's switch the offense up. Why not? Laramie Tunsil was bad. The rest of the line held up pretty well. Did someone allow zero sacks? Gonzalez at right guard allowed zero sacks. That was a very, very good pick. He's at a 90 overall playing up to a 92 in only his second year. Where does he rank for right guards? He is number two, so he's like a top three or four guard in the NFL. And he definitely played like it, which is shocking. <laughs> but Christian Harris, 106 tackles of the team, TFLs, 24 for Hunter, 16 for Weathersby, 15 for Anderson, and sacks. Finally, we got the sack production we have been deserving. 17 and a half for Hunter, 13 for Anderson, the first time both of them have done well in a season, at least in terms of sacks. Six for Davis, five for Weathersby, and interceptions, three for Stingley and Rose, two for Williams, Cashman, and more, and one for a couple players. So our defense was very, very good. But MVP goes to Jalen Hurts. That's interesting. We didn't have a single Mahomes or Prescott MVP. That's shocking. Prescott wasn't even up here. Did he go to a new team? I don't know. But Offensive Player of the Year goes to Jonathan Taylor again. Defensive Player of the Year, the fourth year in a row, going to Max Crosby. We get cucked. Hunter at number two. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Tom Holcomb for the Raiders. Maybe a QB. I don't know. Elliot Jackson at number five. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to, they've been getting a lot of rookie awards, Jalen Holloway for the Bengals. We get 
get cucked again. Pat Rose at number two. But it doesn't really matter. We wouldn't get those awards until after the year. Or get the rewards for those awards. But should we go with the, the Chiefs offense? Is that the plan? Is that what we're gonna do? I mean, we might as well. The only thing is, you know, it obviously uses tight ends the most, and that's not exactly the strongest weapon we have, but whatever. Still better than what we've been doing. And to be honest, I don't really expect to win this game against the Colts. I feel like I have really bad luck against the Colts in the playoffs. I feel like we just never beat them when we're doing a rebuild. They had a really good offense and a pretty good defense, and we have a hot opponent scenario. It is a division rival too. I'm surprised we didn't get one of those, but we will go. Be be confident, y'all know me. I'm not confident in us winning this game, but we'll see what happens. We're also coming off of a 12 to 7 win against the Titans. I wonder how many times that score has happened. I would guess it's not many. It's a really weird score. I wonder if we had all field goals or if we missed extra points. I don't know. But let's simulate this game again. Maybe the end of the rebuild. We'll see. Okay, no, we do win a very close game 28 to 25 against the Colts. Deservingly so. Like we were a five overall better team and at home. Really? At least I think they were an 85. I don't know. But we have a recap for the hot opponent, however long it's going to take to load. I'm glad I'm getting a new PC, which by the way, expect maybe no video tomorrow. I have my PC built, which I've never built a PC before and it was a pain. Do I feel like yapping? Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to take a minute to yap. So I built it based off of a YouTube tutorial, which was like just the best $2,000 PC you can build because you know, it's better to build a PC than buy a pre-built one. I mean, it's easier to buy a pre-built one, but it's more, I guess, cost effective to build your own. Anyways, I watched a tutorial for like the best $2,000 PC and they showed them doing most of it, but they didn't show a few key parts like putting in the, the water cooler, which was a pain in the ass for multiple reasons. The major one being the parts they had linked in the description weren't the same ones they used in the video. They changed them. I don't know if they became more expensive, but it was in like the end of December that video came out. It wasn't that long ago. So I don't know, maybe the parts went up in price. Maybe they were Christmas sales. I don't know. I had such a difficult time. Some of the pieces didn't fit. I had to take pieces off. I felt like a genius when I got that shit done. It was so hard. I had to do some crazy shit. Mind you, I've never built a PC before and I don't know shit about them. Like, I don't, if you show me a part, I probably wouldn't be able to tell you what it is, honestly, for the most part. I'm, I might now, but <laughs> before I did that, I wouldn't have. So expect videos to, you know, hopefully look nicer Maybe they'll be a little less laggy. They're not that laggy, but at times I guess they are. And hopefully out at more normal times if they render more quickly. Anyways, big yap sesh over. All that to say, maybe no video tomorrow as I'm trying to get stuff downloaded onto my PC. If I can get Windows to download, I'm trying to download it onto a flash drive, which is also a tutorial from the channel, and I can't get it to work. I've been having a rough time. Uh, <laughs> anyways, the, Ra er, the Raiders, the Steelers are actually a pretty good overall here. They're an 88. Usually I see them kind of struggle in rebuilds at times, but they... Stayed a really good team here. I wonder if they have Justin Fields. No, they have Deshaun Dobbins, a quarterback from Colorado with only normal dev. That's tough. Has he played well? Yeah. He's been around for three years. He's only 24, so he was a 21-year-old rookie, but he's only developed three, or not three overall, but like developed up to an 81 and no dev trait. That's kind of crazy. But anyways, let's simulate this game out. And let's see what happens. And we lose in a one point game. That makes me wonder if the Steelers went for two to finish the game out. Probably not, that would be insanely risky, but let me see. Or I guess you can't really tell from here, can you? I thought you could check like the play-by-play -play somewhere. I don't know, whatever. We lose, that's what it comes down to. But we built literally the best roster in the league, so I did what I could. This was a lot of fun, this is a very good roster. And I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. Again, if you did, 3,000 likes and I will do another Texans rebuild or whatever the most liked comment on this video is. So leave a comment of any fun rebuild ideas you have. Be sure to like some that you think are good. And yeah, 3000 likes and I'll do that. But subscribe if you like this video. And on screen now is probably another one. Feel free to watch that. But thank you all so much for watching. And with that, I will see y'all again in the next video. Goodbye.